we're being asked to expand. Now, before we can actually expand this, uh, we have to deal with the square root. So one way to do that is to write this as follows. This is the log base 2 of x squared y cubed over z to the fourth. And this whole thing is being raised to the 1 half. Right, you can do that because the square root of x is just x to the 1 over 2. Right, there's a 1 here and there's a 2 here, so it's just 1 over 2. All right, now we'll use the power rule and bring the 1 half downstairs. So this is 1 half log base 2 of x squared y cubed over z to the fourth. And now we can finally use the quotient rule, right? Because if you recall the quotient rule, it says if you have ln of a over b, it's equal to the natural log of a minus the natural log of b. So there's really a 1 here, and so you can only use the quotient rule if there's a 1 here. And now we have that 1, and so we can use the quotient rule. So this is 1 half parentheses, I'll use a bracket, log base 2 of x squared y cubed minus log base 2 of z to the fourth. You might say, well, why do you need parentheses or a bracket? There's really a bracket here or parentheses here, except we don't need it up here, right? But when it becomes two terms, when this becomes two terms, you do need it because you have to distribute the one half at some point. Okay, let's keep going. This is actually a harder one, it seems. So this will be equal to one half. And I'll keep my bracket. Here we have a product, so we'll use the product rule. So this is log base 2 of x squared plus log base 2 of y cubed. And let's go ahead and use the power rule here to bring this guy to the front. So minus 4 log base 2 of z. So this is 1 half bracket. Let's use the power rule on these first two logs. So 2 log base 2 of x, right? We just took the 2 and put it in the front, plus 3 log base 2 of y minus 4 log base 2 of z. We are almost done. The last thing to do is distribute the 1 half. So let's do that carefully. So we have 1 half, and then it's being multiplied by 2, so it cancels. We just get log base 2 of x. Then here we have 1 half times 3, so 3 halves. Log base 2 of y. And finally, we have 1 half times negative 4, so that's negative 2 log base 2 of z. So that's the final answer. I hope this helps.